guys, it's me, and I'm posting a video at night because I can't fall asleep. So, I'm going to react to actual, like, dark messages behind nursery rhymes. So, this is my first reaction video. So, yeah. If you want to watch this by yourself without me interrupting every now and again. Just go to the infra this show on YouTube. So yeah, let's get started. Plagues, murder, human sacrifice. This is hardly the stuff of children's literature, or is it? Once you hear the dark messages behind nursery rhymes that you thought you knew, You'll have to agree that Mother Goose has earned her place alongside the world's greatest horror writers. Why? I know a little bit of these, so I'll tell you if I, at the end of when they say one of the ones I know, so yeah. Like Edgar Allan Poe, Bram Stoker, and Stephen King. Nursery rhymes have seemed harmless or downright cute to us today. But when you learn about the dark history behind some of the most famous and enduring nursery rhymes, they sound less like adorable children's songs and more like gruesome horror stories. From evil monarchs to public executions, deadly plagues. Hold up, was that Mary who got the nickname Bloody Mary? Who had a creepy game based off of her? Okay, I did not expect that. Let's continue. To brutal murders. Nursery rhymes are more than just background music for fun children's games. They're a living record of some of the history. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. This catchy nursery rhyme from 1881 brings. I actually know this one just because my cousin told me about this. To mind images of adorable children holding hands, singing and dancing in a circle until they all fall down. It may seem like a harmless game, but this fun children's song actually has a very dark story behind it. The memorable rhyme is actually about the Great Plague that hit London in 1665 and killed up to 15% of the entire population of the city. The rosy refers to the painful and highly visible rash that was... I saw some pictures of what when that happened because I was studying it, and it looked painful, so this is nothing to the actual pictures of people who had it. The hallmark symptom of the plague. Death and disease were so rampant in the crowded cities that citizens took to filling their pocket with sweet-smelling flowers like posies to cover up the stench of death that was everywhere. And the mention of ashes is a reference to the thousands of bodies of plague victims that were unceremoniously burned in an attempt to prevent the spread of the disease and to clear the city of the piles of bodies of victims. I got told a different version, like they said, it goes ring around the rosy and that whole thing. It says ashes, ashes, like human ashes, and we all fall down. Two different versions I heard is we all die or we all go to, I don't like saying it, so yeah. Let's carry on. There's definitely more to this children's song and game than it first appears. The often brutal reality of life in London has inspired more than one dark poem. It's not just plagues that provided dark fodder for nursery rhymes. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Don't let the catchy tune of this cla- I did not hear this one before. Ask a nursery rhyme fool you. There's an incredibly dark history behind London Bridge's sweet melody. The rhyme was penned in 1744 and was allegedly written about a Viking attack on London in the early 1000s. According to a legend, the group of Vikings under King Olaf II of Norway stormed the city and destroyed the iconic bridge. But there is much debate among scholars over whether this attack ever actually happened. Even if the story of a violent Viking attack turns out to be nothing but legend, there's more darkness behind London Bridge that might be even more brutal than a Viking. Okay, I did not hear the first vision. 
I think the version that they're about to say, I did hear. I'm not s spoiling it. The invasion, the real dark message behind London Bridge nursery rhyme is actually one of human sacrifice. At the time of the bridge's construction, it was widely believed. Yep, that's the one, and I do not. <laughs> that burying bodies in the foundation of buildings was a surefire way to keep the structure standing. The bodies were thought to add strength to the structure, and the spirits of the dead would also watch over the bridge in death. Even worse, the sacrificed people, many of them children, were rumored to have been immured in the walls, meaning they were entombed within the foundations while they were alive, and slowly died from lack of food and water after the walls had been bricked up. This brings a whole new level of darkness to the children's game that often accompanied No! Sorry, guys, pause this video for a sec. I am not advertising you. With their arms to represent the bridge, while others will take their turn walking under the bridge. When the song ends, the bridge falls and the children will drop their arms. The last person to walk under the bridge finds themselves trapped within the walls, just like the human sacrifices of legend. Human sacrifice is certainly dark, but one family had so much darkness in their history that they inspired multiple dark nursery rhymes. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row. I never heard this in their serial rhyme. Sweet and harmless sounding rhyme from 1744 is actually all about a very dark subject. Mary, the first of England, also known in history as Bloody Mary. She was the first woman to rule England. <clears throat> Bloody Mary. But I want to sing the song, but I'll also get copyrighted for singing the song. Because it's called Blo Bloody Mary from the Wednesday show, if you watched it. In her own right. And though her reign was short, it was brutal and bloody. Mary's father, King Henry VIII, had split with the Catholic Church over the Church's refusal to grant him a divorce from Mary's mother, Catherine, the first of his eventual six wives. A staunch Catholic herself, when Mary took the throne, she set about reversing her father's religious reforms and exacting her revenge for this horrific treatment of her mother. During her short reign, Mary made it illegal to practice a different religion than the monarch and brutally tortured anyone who refused to convert to Catholicism. Under Mary's rule, hundreds of heretics were burned alive in the stake. The silver bells and cockle shells of the rhyme might sound like beautiful flowers or harmless gardening instruments, but in reality, they were actually medieval torture devices rumored to have been used on heretics under Mary's orders. Bloody Mary's reign was so brutal that it inspired more than one dark nursery rhyme, including this one from 18... More than one. Don't question, but I researched a lot of this stuff about the past, and it turned out that... She's the reason why the Bloody Mary horror game is a thing. It was based off of her. So let's get this. And Five. Three blind mice. Three blind mice. See how they run. See how they run. They all ran after the farmer's wife, who cut off their tails with a carving knife. Did you ever see such a thing in your life as three blind mice? The three bl I heard this rhyme. I don't know what they're talking about because I never heard how bad it was. Mice in the rhyme were thought to be three prominent Protestant bishops, Hugh Latimer, Nicholas Radley, and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer. These formerly powerful men not only refused to convert to Catholicism under Mary's brutal rule, but they also actively plotted to overthrow her. The plot was discovered and the three religious men were charged with treason and burned alive at the stake. Their executions were some of the most high profile of the many, many brutal executions doled out during Mary's reign. For years after their killings, rumors swirled that Mary had also had the men dismembered and blinded before death. And though that was later proven to be false, the legend stuck and the men would forever be known as the three blind mice. If you thought Mary was bad, you only have to look at her family tree to see where she got it from. Another popular nursery rhyme from 1805 was based on the dark deeds of Mary's own father. Old Mother Hubbard went to her cupboard to get her poor doggy a bone. When she got there, the cupboard was bare, so the poor little doggy had none. This rhyme might seem benign and wholesome, but it's actually a potent example of the terrible wrath of King Henry VIII. Apparently, Old Mother Hubbard wasn't a woman at all. The character was actually a mockery of Cardinal Thomas Wolseley. The Catholic priest who refused to help King Henry get an annulment from his first wife, Mary's mother, so he could marry his mistress Anne Boleyn. 
Wolseley's refusal to help Henry get the annulment he so desperately wanted led to Wolseley's political downfall and Henry's eventual split from the Catholic Church, forever changing religious life in England and around the world. The story is especially dark when you realize that Henry went to all this trouble only to have his marriage to Anne last for a mere three years before he had her beheaded for treason, so he could marry the third of his six wives. Mary's brutal persecution of heretics is legendary, but here too she took a page out of her father's books. This 1784 rhyme paints a disturbing picture of how Catholics were treated under her father, King Henry. There's no denying that Mary certainly learned a thing or two from him in her later persecution of Protestants. Goosey, goosey gander, whither dost thou wander? Upstairs and downstairs and in my lady's chamber. There I met an old man who wouldn't say his prayers. I took him by the left leg and threw him down the stairs. Henry's rage over the Catholic Church's refusal to grant him a divorce played out in a brutal bloody war of a devout Catholic still living in England at the time of its split from the Catholic Church. With persecution of Catholics at an all-time high, many devout Catholics took to creating priests' holes in their homes, small hidden rooms no bigger than a closet where they could hide to have their priests perform Catholic Mass and say their Latin prayers. If caught, they would face torture or even death for their heresy. The narrator in the poem meets an old man who won't say his prayers, which is probably a reference to discovering a hidden Catholic priest who refused to pray in English. The narrator brags about throwing the man down the stairs, a colloquial term for having someone put to death. Henry and Mary are far from the only monarchs to have inspired nursery rhymes with their lurid and sometimes dark deeds. Georgie Porgy putting in pie, kissed. I never thought it would be this dark. So yeah. The girls had made them cry. When the boys came out to play, Georgie Porgy ran away. The Georgie from this silly sounding nursery rhyme from 1841 is thought to be a reference to George Villiers, the Duke of Buckingham, and a beloved friend of King James I. The two men were so close, in fact, that Villiers was rumored to actually be James's longtime lover. While there's no hard proof of their romantic relationship, it was certainly no secret that James favored Villiers and showered him with land, titles, and money during his reign. This, combined with Villiers' reputation as a ladies' man who had frequent dalliances with married women, sometimes against their will, earned him the hatred of other men at court and eventually led to him being stabbed to death in a local pub. Naughty royals certainly make good fodder for dark nursery rhymes, but sometimes the real story behind a gruesome rhyme is actually less dark than the rumors that surround it. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. This rhyme has long been rumored to be about Francis King Louis XVI and his wife Marie Antoinette, who lost their crowns and their heads in the French Revolution of 1793. But the rhyme, written in 1765, actually predates their executions by a good 30 years. Scholars agree that it's more likely about King Charles I's attempt to reform the tax on liquids. When Parliament rejected his proposal, he retaliated by reducing the volume of half pints, known as jacks, and quarter pints, commonly called gilts. In yet another royal-inspired nursery rhyme, lurid rumors about two English monarchs have been passed on from generation to generation. rock a -bye baby in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And down will come baby, cradle and all. This sweet song is no wholesome lullaby. It's actually rumored to be about King James II of England and his wife, Mary of Medina. In 1630, they announced the long-awaited birth of their son, Charles. After years of difficult pregnancies and the death of at least five of their infant children, England at last had a Catholic heir to the throne. The trouble was, it was widely believed that the boy was not actually their son at all. Rumors spread far and wide that the boy, who is now a prince, had not been born of James and his wife, but had actually been snuck into their birthing room and passed off as their own son. Whatever the truth of his birth, Charles went on to become one of England's most popular popular kings, earning himself the nickname of the Merry Monarch for his lively and indulgent court life. Many nursery rhymes are not what they seem, but the story of the origin of this rhyme will certainly come as a surprise. Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush so early in the morning. This simple rhyme is often part of an amusing game for children, but it actually has dark, sinister roots. According to a former governor of England's notorious 420-year-old Wakefield prison, the song should not be credited to Mother Goose. Rather, it was created by the prison's female prisoners in the 1840s. The prisoners took their daily exercise outside under strict supervision, walking round and round a mulberry tree in the prison yard. And they invented the song to liven up their monotonous routine. Nursery rhymes are truly more than just child's play. Now that you know the dark messages behind nursery rhymes, these merry songs will never be the same. If you thought this video was fascinating, be sure and check out our...
Okay, guys, like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell to get notified when I make a new video. If you so, yeah, and remember, tomorrow I'm posting a cool video about Valentine's Day. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Bye, I gotta go. Bye.